the next session for today, boys and girls, and we're going to call this the small angle approximation. And so what I want to do is I want to show you on the AP test, I give you an equation that looks, let me kick it to you, something like this. It's right here. XM is, and then notice they don't use the equal sign. Equals M lambda L it's over D. It's approximately equal to that. And that's called the small angle approximation equation. And so let me show you, let me show you what that means. Okay. Remember before, and you actually you never have to use this equation, but it helps you save some time, and that's why I want to go over it. Because what I, what I, we finished the last discussion, we were saying that in order to find this distance, you can use this equation to find theta, right? And once you use that equation to find theta, you can just use trig, you know, and use opposite over adjacent, and use tangent, and find this distance. You know the adjacent is the length of the screen, and you can use that to find the, the thing in my body and use it to find that distance. <clears throat> but, here's, here's the idea here, okay? For very small angles, for small angles, the tangent of theta is almost equal to the sine of theta. Now, you may or may not believe me, but let's just make a little chart here. One, two, three, four, five, six degrees. Sine of theta, tangent of theta. If you take your calculator and look at that, all right, DN, what's, what's the sine of one? Make sure it's in degrees, not radians. 0 0.01745. 0 0.01745. Okay, what's the tangent of theta? Point zero one seven four five. Oh, looky B. All right. What's the sine of two degrees? Point zero three four eight nine nine. Point zero three four eight nine nine. Eight no whatever. That would be rounded off, of course, but I don't want to keep rounding everything up. What about the next one? Point zero three four nine. Oh oh well eight nine nine. That's Print nine what? Two? Two. Yeah. Okay, what about three degrees? Sine of three is point zero five two three three five nine. And what about the other one? Point zero five two four oh seven. Alright, whatever. Alright. If we go on, as your angles get bigger, right? As your angles get bigger, then you know, but you can see here to the thousandth place. You know, that they're almost identical. And the smaller that angle is, the more approximately equal they are to each other. And so on the AP test, you have to look at the problem and decide, okay, are, is this angle pretty small? And usually if they'll tell you, you know, they'll say the slit difference, I said I said that wrong, the slit distance is, and they'll give you some small, really small number. And they'll say the distance of the screen is like two meters, and then they say the slit difference Distance is, you know, 5 times 10 to the negative 3, you know, some really small number. In that case, you know theta is really, really small. But there's some problems where, like, it's usually with a sound type problem where they're using diffraction of sound, that you usually can't use this, this idea. But I just wanted you to see that, that those angles are pretty close. So let's look at these triangles here. And this, this distance from here to here... I don't know why, because we're in my drawing here, we're going up. But we call that distance from here to here, we call that distance x. And we're going to the first fringe, so we call that x subscript m, because that's the distance of the first fringe. Okay? Now, that's the same distance from the middle to the top fringe, and that would be the same distance here, wouldn't it? That would be x sub m. Now, if I want to go to the next bright spot down here, guess what they call that distance? Instead of x sub 1, that would be what? x sub 2. That would be x sub 2, and then this one is x sub 1. Make sense? 
Well, if that's true, if we look at this triangle here, tangent is opposite over adjacent, isn't it? So tangent of theta is xm over L. Sine of theta, we're going to this similar triangle, is opposite over <coughs> hypotenuse, right? So sine of theta is m, and that's the fringe number, <coughs> lambda over d. Okay? Well, since they're not, the since they're approximately, we write the equation like that. Make sense? And so all we're saying is that from here over L is approximately equal to M lambda over D over there. Now in the AP test, what they do is they, they write the equation like this. They multiply both sides by L, and they come up with this distance is equal to M lambda L over D. And all that is is a small angle approximation equation. How much time do we have? Uh, four minutes. Four minutes left? Okay. Now back, let's just go back to this equation. Um, D sine of theta equals M lambda. If I want to get to a dark spot, then how do I change this equation? Okay, it would be what? Half x sub 1. Okay, it would be m plus 1 half lambda equals d sine of theta. Does that make sense? So if I wanted to go from the middle to the first dark spot, here's the middle to the first dark spot, m is 0 here. Okay, so instead of being a full wavelength longer distance, it would be half a wavelength longer. So it's one half lambda. If I want to go to the sec the first, the basically the second dark spot, spot which is the first fringe, it'd be one plus one half lambda. See the difference? Now there's a few other things that they could throw at you on the AP test dealing with this. And about the only other thing that they'll throw at you that I need to talk about is. If they try to throw at you, it's called single slit interference. Basically, with single slit interference, is if you have one slit, those waves have to go. You know, notice a wave going. If you have light in this end of the slit and light on this end of the slit, they have to go different distances, don't they? And so, if the slit is wide enough, what you get is you also get you can get lines on the screen. You can get single slit interference and double slit interference because those waves at different, the light at different ends of the slit has to go different distances. The difference is the intensity of the graph. See, one of the things they like to ask you to do is draw the intensity of the graph. And so usually if you have to draw this, you draw, if, you know, okay, if I took this and rotated it like this, you have this, and then you have a bigger slit in the middle, and the intensity kind of tapers off as you go farther away. But if it's single slit interference, it's usually this, you get a really big, big intense, wider and bigger in the middle. Sometimes I'll ask you to draw those pictures. What time do I have? One minute. All right. But the only thing is, if you're going to have a thing with single slit interference, then the, this equation, m lambda equals d sine of theta, it's the same equation, except d now is, instead of the difference between the slits, d is the separation of the slits. But this equation, it's backwards. This equation now will take you to the first dark spot. Whereas, whereas in two slit, this equation will take you to the first bright spot. Make sense? And cut.